Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome as we come together to celebrate this 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Just as we heard last week, the theme of discipleship of Jesus and being missionaries, being witnesses of good news, continues in our gospel. For the times, perhaps you notice in the last week, we have not been good news to others. Let's ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty oh God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my own sweetest fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on and earth peace, peace to people of good will. We praise you, you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, and hear our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, in the, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may suck and be satisfied with her consoling breasts, that you may drink deeply with delight from the abundance of her glory. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of, her, of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall suck, you shall be carried upon her hip, and fondled upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. Cry Cry out out with with joy to God, God, all all the earth. earth. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O sing to the glory of his name. O render him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome your deeds. Cry Cry out out with with joy joy to God, God, all all the earth. Before you all the earth shall bow down, shall sing to you, sing to your name, come and see the works of God. Awesome his deeds among the children of men. Cry Cry out out with joy joy to God, God, all all the earth. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. Let our joy then be in him. He rules forever by his might. Cry Cry out with with joy to God, all all the earth. earth. Come and hear all who fear God. I will tell what he did for my soul. Blessed be God who did not reject my prayer, nor withhold from me his merciful love. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, far be it from me to glory, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. Peace and mercy be upon all who walk by this rule, upon the Israel of God. Henceforth, let no one trouble me, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to come. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore, the Lord of the harvest, to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and salute no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a person of peace is there, your peace shall rest upon them. But if not, it shall return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it shall be more tolerable on that day for Sodom than for that town. The seventy returned the with joy, saying, 
Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The theme of discipleship in Luke's gospel is a big one, and it continues this week from where we left off last week. Last week, we were being told, perhaps, or shown the way of the disciple. And this week, it really looks at missionaries and being missionary disciples. Because disciples of Jesus, the followers of Jesus, through their own lives, should be embarking upon missionary endeavors to bring about that kind of community that Isaiah hints at in the first reading that we hear today. One where there is a sense of real care, real concern, one in which all people are nourished, where there is a sense of security and prosperity. Because that is the gospel that we are called to witness to, that we are called to be missionaries of in the world in which we live. It seems to me if one combs through this gospel this morning very carefully, you will notice that there are some key qualities of missionary life that Jesus teaches his disciples and by implication teaches us. We are called daily to witness through our own lives to the good news of Jesus. But that may not always go according to the way that we see it. Let's look at the three invitations that are put before us this morning. And the first invitation is one of accepting the challenge. There's a challenge on two levels in the gospel that we hear today. The first one is that some of what we offer to others, our belief, our faith, our relationship with Jesus, will not be accepted by others. We know this all too well. We live in a secular world where there are many people who do not believe in the gospel. Our duty is is to invite them to the good news. Notice that Jesus tells those disciples, don't go and compel people. You can only invite them. If they do not accept it, move on. No need to judge them or to condemn them, but simply move on knowing that you have put the invitation before them. All too often, people of faith today, and especially the Christian right, when people don't buy into their brand of discipleship, tend to condemn or to coerce or to force or to judge. But Jesus doesn't ask us to do any of that. He simply asks us to offer an invitation, and then, if it's not accepted, to move on. And there's a second level as well of challenge if we're going to be missionary disciples. And we alluded to that last week. Notice Jesus is very specific that missionary disciples do not need much, that their lives should be simple. Just as his life, the pattern of his life was simple, so he invites his disciples to live simple lives. As I said last week, we live in a consumerist world. We're invited to have piles of things. We're invited to have many gadgets which we think are going to enhance our lives. And yet, it seems, Jesus says, strip it all down to the bare minimum. 
strip it all down so that you live a simple life. Strip it all down so that the pattern of your life is the same as my life. We do not need piles of things. Take simply for the journey the very basics that you need. And that in itself is a witness to others. We are always impressed by those who own big mansions on mountains overlooking the sea or drive in glitzy cars. And yet for Jesus, the missionary disciple is one who does not climb up the ladder, but one who is willing to humbly serve others by bringing them good news. And that, I suspect, for us is a big challenge. We are brought up to think in the opposite way. Notice the second invitation, the task of the missionary. Jesus talks about proclaiming peace, sharing life with those people that you live with, welcoming them, and he talks about healing. All else is secondary. That is the task of the disciple of Jesus, that we are people who, first of all, are willing to share with, in the lives of others, no matter who they are, where they come from, what they've done, what they haven't done. We're invited to share life. We're invited to offer peace. We're invited to be hospitable and welcoming. We're invited to offer healing. So often, many people experience the Christian church in a different way, one that is not always a place of welcome and a place of healing, one that is not always willing to share life and to speak words of peace. We're invited to do this in our communities. And maybe even today, the invitation for us is to offer those very qualities, to perform those very tasks in our own families, bringing about peace, sharing life, welcoming, and healing. And the third invitation in this gospel is to notice that a missionary is always on a journey. The word journey being an important word in Luke's gospel. We are on a journey because we are walking, we are moving through life. We're on a journey because we're being accompanied by Jesus and the Spirit of God. We need to let go or we're invited to let go of all that is not needed, even of the past that didn't go well. Jesus says, carry on, make the journey, shake the dust from your feet, yet keep moving along. And that's important. And Pope Francis is talking about us being a church that accompanies, a church that journeys with, a church that is not static or stuck, but rather a church that is always on the move. And we're invited always to be on the move, not to be held back by those things that didn't go well. We're invited to accompany one another, knowing that the Lord accompanies us. And notice the last thing that Jesus says. We are not in this for ourselves, but rather for each other and with each other. So many people hold this strange belief that it is my relationship with Jesus. I go to church and a child dare make a noise and they're disturbing my time with my Lord. I've heard that. And yet we are journeying together. We have a common destiny, not an individual destiny. Jesus says, making sure that our names are inscribed in heaven. Our destiny is the kingdom of God. And so we make this journey together. And perhaps the quality, the quality 
of our discipleship, the quality of our missionary endeavors rests on the quality of our willingness to journey together. Because if we think we're doing this as individuals, we perhaps are in for a big surprise. Let's take up these invitations, the challenge of being the missionary of Jesus today. Those two levels. Sometimes being able to let go of what is not accepted by others, to let go of those things that we don't need. That willingness to share life, to be people of peace, welcome, and healing. And always to remember that we are journeying with one another, guided by the Lord and God's Spirit, who is always with us. Let's profess our faith as we say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's now bring our prayers before the Lord knowing that God listens to us and hears our prayers and responds as God knows best. For missionaries, that they would never tire of their efforts to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. May their commitments bear fruit. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For the whole church, that the church would be faithful to the mission of Jesus to preach the gospel of good news to the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. For all who hold public office, that they would carry out their duties with honesty and integrity, seeking to serve and not to be served. We also pray for an end to corruption, political infighting, and sheer arrogance. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For those who volunteer their services to minister in the church. For all who volunteer in the many service-orientated works of mercy and charity in the church, that God would bless them and their efforts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that we would not be afraid of the challenge of the gospel to live simple lives and in so doing, take care of God's creation. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. Let us pray in silence for our own needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can make our prayers known to you through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all hearts to the Church. May this offering dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your spirit you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks for the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands. Confessing your mercy, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in the saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Buti our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, 
so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray now in the words that the Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let's take a moment now to offer those around us a sign of God's peace. If you're alone, simply just pray for peace at this time. And we pray together, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.